still what you know is very little. But if as you become more and more conscious, you determine the biochemical algorithms. That means you determine the nature of the experience. But now the question was, can we build machines like this? Yes, we can. As we can build machines which can do math for us, we can build machines which will write stories for us, we can build machines which will make music for us, we can build machines which are intuitive in nature. Already, uh, your smartphones, they're adv advertising that this phone is more intuitive than the other phone. This means, before you know what you want, it is popping out and say, what you want, because it's figured you out from the usage to some extent. As you can figure out human beings, other human beings, your phone is figuring out who you are. Maybe it knows more about you than you know about yourself. Not self-realized, but it's figured you out. So, uh, this is a, a very valid question. This is a question that needs to be looked at more profoundly than just talking about intuition or emotion. It needs to be looked at as a life process, because life process is such, there is no separation between intelligence, intuition, thought, uh, beat of the heart, function of the liver, function of the kidney, or what the spleen is doing, what the brain is doing, there is no differentiation. It is one seamless function. To grasp it that way is most important. Only then you will know life, only then you will experience life to its fullest. Only then you will find that you will be speechless about life <laughs> because there is no word. The, what is there? Is there a word? Is there a vocabulary to describe a phenomena like this? There is no word. Words are coming because you're looking at small pieces and describing those small pieces and coming out with all kind of uh, descriptions simply because we are seeing everything through a keyhole of human intellect. If you look at it through human intelligence, if you allow your intelligence to reflect... No, no, this word reflection, again people think I must sit and think about it. No, I'm talking about if you are like a mirror, and you reflect everything as it is, then you will see you have no word. There is no word to describe what is life, what it is... what is it about. There is no conclusion. When there is no word, there is no conclusion. When there is no conclusion, there is no death. This is the way of liberation. I know you asked a simple question about whether machines can become like this or not. Machines can become everything that you are can do everything that you can do, probably better than you. As you know, they are doing things better than you. Only thing is, they cannot become consciousness. Well, some people are saying we will build consciousness into a machine, that's not going to happen, because that's life. What you call as consciousness is the essence of life, that which cannot be described, for that which we don't have a word to say what it is, that which is that indescribable force which makes everything happen, that will not happen in a machine, one hundred percent. Namaskaram. The word tantra has acquired a completely distorted meaning. Whatever human beings are doing, use the same things to elevate yourself. This is the way of the tantra. Tantrics are always worshippers of goddess. Whatever you want to know about your life, just like that. Simply they will say it. If your imagination is powerful enough and consistent enough, any kind of form you want, you can actually create it, manifest it and make it walk. Do not try to separate yoga and tantra because yoga is technology too, it is tantra. Shambhavi Mahamudra for sure is a sophisticated technology. The Tibetans, because they came from a culture which was steeped in occult, they added Dakinis and Dakinis and everybody to Buddha. Kailash is known as the Tantric Mountain.